Hi, this is Eric Martin with Board Game Geek. I'm here with Benjamin from La Boite de Jeux. And we are looking Hello, at in the palm, palm of your hand. Benjamin, thank you very much for joining us. You've got a great thank environment you. there. Yes, uh, is that it's a home? bit rainy outside and it's kind of gloomy weather, but it's a game that is supposed to be warm and soothing and happy. So I thought we can have a play uh, near the fireplace. Okay, <laughs> that that looks great. That's a very different environment from what we are normally used to at this time of year. <laughs> so, yeah, it's kind of uh, cold here, talk... so it's it's fine. Yeah. So maybe you can talk a bit about what is in the palm of your hand. What are we trying to do? Is this competitive or cooperative, or how does so it work? This is a family game. It's from two to eight players and the age is 10 and up. And let's say you can play 30 minutes, but you can play as long as you want, really. And it's a game uh, where you will try to share um, feelings and sensations uh, through uh, the sense of touch. So um, first, let me reassure you, we don't touch directly. There are no skin-to-skin -skin contact. Uh, you will only feel objects in your hand. Um, and that's it. But you can say it's a game that is uh, touching both uh, figuratively and uh, uh, literally. Um, so the game, the story is about uh, Leon, who is a grandfather. He was born in uh, 1950, so he experienced, he experienced a lot of things. He worked uh, different jobs. He had both happy and sad moments, and he met his wife and had kids, etc. And he really yeah. likes to tell all of his stories to his grandchildren now. And by now, they know all of uh, his stories by heart. But... Sadly, Leon is getting older, and for him, the, favor the memories are starting to fade away. So in order for him to remember them, uh, they play a little game together, and that's what we're going to do as well. So in the game, um, there are uh, 100 memory cards. So throughout his life, Leon um, gathered memories. So maybe Lincoln, you can show a few of those cards. Um, so yes, it can be pictures, it can be newspapers, cuts, it can be postcards, it can be, you know, um, different things, tickets, etc. So we've got 100 of his memories uh, in all of uh, the span of his life. So when he was a kid and when he grew up, when he met his wife, when he, we saw his children growing up and his grandchildren growing up. So, okay, so here are a couple of cards. Um, and uh, also we have objects in this game. We've got 11 uh, different objects. Uh, maybe Lincoln, you can show them as well. So we've got very different objects. We've got uh, them different by their size, by their shapes, by their texture. We've got, uh, you know, wooden spinning top here. Mm. We have a metal coin. We have a piece of fabric. We have this rubbery uh, dart. Um, we have lace, we have plastic cubes. So here, I don't know how to, you say this in English, it's Velcro, it's scratch. Yep. Hook and yeah. eyes. So both, uh, both a, a scratchy and rough side and a soft one. So you've got all of this to make uh, okay. sensations in the palm of the hand. So how do we play? Okay. Um, one player will play as the child and the other one as the grandfather. And uh, first, uh, the child will draw a card secretly to see the memory. And the other player will uh, present his hands like this and close his eyes. And the child will mime uh, the, the memory uh, in the palm of his hand using as many uh, objects as uh, he wants, uh, how he wants, so you can get creative. 
So maybe we can do a little example here. Let's say the child draw this card, which mm -hmm. is a teenager Leon playing his guitar. So how we can do this? Maybe Lincoln, you can intertwine the string. Well, actually, we've we've in, got two people with here. With fingers. So. Benjamin, so we actually have two people. So, Nikki as well. Yeah. yeah. So we ha we can do an example. Uh, maybe try yeah. and so so after uh, one player tries to transmit the memory, what happens yeah. after that point? So while we are okay, I will explain the rules and we'll make the example later. So while okay. we are doing this, uh, the other players they are watching. But obviously, what they see is a little bit different of what the grandfather feels. And they mm -hmm. have cards in their hand, and they will try to pick uh, a card, a memory, uh, to confuse the grandfather. So that's, it's possible that it's <laughs> this memory and not the right memory. So okay. we will do this once, and then we will do it one, one, one more time. So we, the child will draw a second memory, and he will make a second mime, and the other players will confuse a second time. And we will add uh, random cards as well. We will shuffle them. And now the grandfather reveals all the cards, and he has to find the two right memory cards, cards in the right order. Okay. So it's a little bit tricky because we are not really used uh, to remember sensations. And you will see that sometimes you, you can fuse your memories. You don't remember if it was, you know, cold for the first one or for the second one. So you'll see. Um, okay. okay, maybe we can try a few rounds with Lincoln and Nikki. Yeah, so for this example, I guess we will keep the images secret. Uh, we can't add um, our own images because we are not there, but we can just add the random ones and then we can all try to yeah, guess. I think we can do both because there are two memories. We can do maybe for the first memory, Nikki can show the cards and Lincoln, obviously, close your eyes. So we can understand a bit what uh, Nikki is doing with the mime. And for the second cards, maybe uh, we can ha have it uh, uh, secret. So we will try to guess as the grandfather. So this is the that first card, great. okay. Um, now you can uh, you you can uh, put it face down, and maybe Lincoln, you can present your hand uh, on the camera and close and your maybe eyes. If it's possible as well, can we have all the objects on the table, just so we can see uh, what's possible? We know what yes. you didn't choose in addition to what you did choose. So okay, good. Yeah, you can put the bag uh, aside just to store them. You don't need it to, uh, to play. Okay. All right, so. Nikki, if you don't have um, m much of an idea how to mime this, you are allowed to discard the card and to draw uh, another one. So for the first play, but if you have an idea, uh, please proceed. <laughs> okay okay all right and, and so keep your eyes closed as, yeah so i'm guessing the memory is as long as the person wants to make it or is there yes exactly but it's it cuts both with because the longer it is the more confused it can be it's sometimes right. better to Go straight to the point. So uh, draw a second card now and have it secret and uh, do the second mime. And obviously, I didn't say it, but uh, you are not allowed to draw the answer or to write the answer. And, right. Uh, you know, use the objects uh, for the texture and their shapes. So now we don't know. The, what the card is, so we try to picture what can be felt. <laughs> okay, all right. Now, uh, 
Okay. Uh, yes, I didn't say it, but uh, Nikki, you and uh, Lincoln, you are not to allowed to talk to each other except to say the mime starts and the mimes ends. So if right. we are done, Nikki, you can draw six random cards and shuffle them with the two uh, good memories. You shuffle them and then you give them to Lincoln, who will uh, reveal them uh, in the center of the table. And uh, okay. tries to find so some I'm guessing good memories. Have, I'm guessing when you have more people, players are going to add a card, and then you're going to add random cards until you have eight. Is that the idea? Exactly. Yes, you add cards, random cards, until you have eight of them. So the more player you are, the more difficult it can be in a sense because uh, all the cards are chosen, chosen to be, you know, ambiguous and uh, can be a false track. Okay. Okay. Well, so, this Nikki, this one you are is not allowed to talk. Uh, so Lincoln, yes, you can say. Uh, I, but this is definitely the cards. first one. This... Yes, and we will reveal after you've you've shown the second one as well. And I think this is the second one, maybe. Okay. So I've got a now, different Nikki, guess. You for can the tell. One. So yes, the first one is the good one. Very good. At but we don't know the second one, so maybe everyone can have a let, guess. Let me look uh, for a little bit longer here and see. We had the cold circle. And hey, we and didn't see it either, Lincoln. Around. So. Maybe uh, it can be the cake, you know, with the candles. I, yeah, it does uh, seem like it could be that. Because there's a she put a box, a cube in my hand. Ah, the, the presents, and, and you saw the cubes uh, yeah. as the toy. So, Nikki, was, uh, what was the right answer? It's the tattoo. No. Yeah. Oh. Uh, it's this one. So, okay, one out of two. It's, it's good. It's good. Oh, <laughs> and, but um, yeah, you can see what she's going for now with the, the circle for the cake and the candles going around it. Yeah. As you and would. it's really yeah. funny to... There are, we try to put as many angles uh, to tackle this in every card. Sometimes you can be very literal when you, you use the shapes. And sometimes it's more in the intention. Uh, for example, here, um, once we met at the convention, we beta tested the game with uh, random players. And someone drew this card, which is uh, an announcement card for the birth of a baby. So we can see a baby here. I think that was a and right. what she did was amazing. She very delicately that one, that one. Uh, put the blanket and then she didn't rush. She took her time and she put it, you know, very softly with the shape <laughs> of the baby. And then it wasn't even shown on the picture, but with, uh, with this, she made the heartbeat. She made doom, 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 <laughs> doom, doom. <laughs> and, you know, she didn't say it out loud. We are not allowed to speak, but the, right. the grandfather, he felt the heartbeat. I think it was so clever. And... Every time we test the game, uh, we see new ways of uh, having the cards guessed. Then so you do the, uh, the heartbeat. Like this. <laughs> do you want to switch roles now? Maybe uh, okay. you can uh, have um, right. Nikki play as the grandfather and Lincoln playing as the child? Sure. And we could keep them both secret, I guess, since now we get the idea of what yes. we're trying to do. Okay. So... Um, as I said, the roles is different uh, every turn. Uh, when you play the, as a child, you have to be creative and invent a way of talking through the sensations. Yeah, when you yeah, are the grandfather, you have to concentrate on your feelings. And by the way, having your eyes closed and waiting to, for a sensation on, on your hand, it's really soothing, really relaxing, almost like meditating. And for the other players, like we are doing right now, uh, we are only watching, but we we picture the sensations with our own cards and trying to confuse. So the mime has started. All right. That's the first card. And do we? Okay. Is it possible that other players score points as well, or it's only involved with? Um, yes. Uh, like, are we trying to um, guess? Um, I will try. Uh, I will tell, talk about the point after the the second mime. Okay. Maybe. Although the points definitely seem secondary. 
Exactly. It's a kind of game where you you start by counting points and at the end you play just for fun. Okay. <laughs> Do your best. <laughs> you <get> right. six. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so as before, shuffle six extra cards. So we have eight. So yeah, All the right. point. Well, Lincoln's so, doing that. Although they are secondary, um, uh, it depends on how many players there are. So if we are, let's say, more three or more, uh, the grandfather and the child score both one point uh, if the memory is uh, found. And other players score one point if uh, the grandfather chose the wrong cards and chose one of the, you know, confusing memory card. Right. I'll mention, uh, Benjamin, one player did get the birthday cake on that last, last go in chat. Ah, uh, on Only the chat. One. Yeah. <laughs> yes. What do you think? Okay. Oh, my goodness. I don't remember very well what we've seen but i think i saw a circle and i can see a wheel a big wheel right. in the i got a guess for oh, the first oh, one there are the the window yeah of the boat also which is circle so and then uh and as well she has to pick both of them before saying yeah anything. first she has two points uh, memory one memory two and uh uh, the the grandfather has to the child has to keep a poker face not to influence obviously right. and when the answer is certain we we reveal if it's right or wrong okay the poker face is always a fun thing I want to keep in the circle lines. I have one player uh, when we do things like code names they have to leave the room they literally cannot yeah. do this <laughs> it depends people can uh, remain uh, calm and other can't control <laughs> and you can read the end that's there in their eyes which is the first oh, one which is the second oh, one I didn't, didn't see but there's also the merry-go-round on the bottom right card which also round and circling yeah. because I think I remember something spinning okay. well. so this is your guess yeah one and two guess. So th this one's correct. Yay! This one for first, th okay. Th yeah, the second one uh, was. yeah, you. Go ahead. You did the the button of the oven, was it? When you. No, turned... what I did is I did the little kid on the chair, like oh, okay. like <laughs> I got the kid oh, on the yeah. chair. Because he was doing like wobbling. Yeah. So that kind of. Because he's right. got his foot up there, it seems yeah. pretty dangerous to be uh, cooking like that. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and then the second one was this one. Oh. So I put this with the wheel, oh my. and then I put oh, the, yeah. the person throwing a cube, which I was rolling across your palm, and oh, then I had three cubes fall off the side. See, he's knocking those I down there. I did not even. Yeah, well, yeah. you weren't oh, there, so. <laughs> I thought this uh, was the circle. Right sure, sure. I, of course, that wasn't in my uh, <laughs> equation. Same with this one. This is pretty good there, too, but. Yeah. But yeah, this was the this was the wheel in the background and then I put the little kid in the foreground oh my gosh. knocking down the cubes. Come on, I mean it's not that it's not that easy to do. <laughs> not easy to get. All right, so this is um okay, a couple of rounds. So you've seen uh, how we start to learn the game. And mm -hmm. once you're familiar with the game, you can spice things up a little bit. We've got uh, constrained cards in the game, the mini cards. I don't have them here. Maybe, Lincoln, you can show them. It's the mini cards here, yeah, right here. Mm. And uh, now, oh. before each mime, the child draw one of those cards, and she can't do what she wants. She has to use only specific objects, or uh, she can't use uh, specific objects, or she has to make the mime uh, in a part of the hand. Oh, we can't see the blue the blue one. Uh, it fades out yes, to our, the camera. Our, our blue screen. <laughs> it's the piece of fabric, yeah. Here, for example, you have to mime, but uh, in the back of the hand. So, um, all the, when, you, uh, when you know all the cards and you have them guessed already with a certain way, with these cards, you have to rethink how to how to make your little mind. Okay. 
So how did, I mean, did the designer bring this to you? I should mention the designer, by the way, uh, Timothée Decroix. Uh, did yes. he bring this particular set of objects or what kind of testing was involved to get this mix? There was a lot of work to fine tune uh, the number of objects and all the texture, but the, the original idea of the game designer was pretty much like this. And he was the one with the idea that every card should uh, revolve around the story of a grandfather. And so we can see all the spectrum of his life. And um, uh, I think when we first tested the game, there were uh, less, a little bit less of, um, of objects. And uh, we really think uh, of all the different texture we can uh, we can bring in, uh, in the game. Um, yeah, um, uh, yes. Mm. And the, I think the constraint card won there at the beginning. Uh, we it's the more we played the game, the afterwards we had this idea, or the game designer had this idea to shake things up a little bit. Okay, interesting. Uh, I'll mention uh, apparently Timothy's in chat right now. <laughs> oh, Timothy, you can correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, there's a different uh, side to it. So there's the game, there's all the sensations, etc. And um, uh, different things that you don't need to uh, you don't need to grasp to play the game. But it's a plus. It's these um, all these memories are linked together, and uh, we actually numbered all of the cards in the lower right corner. Uh, so chronologically, uh, we can uh, we can recreate all of his life and all of his history, his stories, and uh, also at the back of the rule, there's a little uh, montage uh, 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 telling the main lines of uh, of his life, uh, how he met his wife, and uh, how he got lost uh, as a sailor, etc. When he worked in a circus. So here are the main lines, but because there are 100 memories, you can fill the gaps and tell your own stories, uh, you know, about his life. Right. It's fascinating. That is great to see. Uh, yeah, we have another more, minute more or two. I don't know if a, there's... It's a game about feeling and touching, so it's really difficult to pass it through video like this. But I think uh, Nikki and Lincoln did uh, a great job uh, Miming all of this. Yeah. Uh, the game is available now, uh, I assume. Uh, it will be released uh, in two weeks in France, in uh, the 6th okay. of uh, November. And uh, it's um, not released uh, yet uh, in retail in the US, but we are waiting and uh, uh, looking for a partner. Um, I'm pretty confident it will be. And uh, we have a few copies uh, printed in English uh, to be ordered online uh, uh, right now. Okay. Uh, we've got another minute or two. I don't know if you want to talk about uh, other titles you have, just to give a sampling of what mm. else is coming from the Boite de Jeu. Yes, so our uh, big uh, release is this game, but we have uh, also other things uh, in our sleeves. Uh, um, so obviously we will uh, have the It's a Wonderful World expansion. Um, Corruption and Ascension, and that will be released uh, next month uh, uh, in November. So we will fulfill the Kickstarter first, and then it will be available in retail. Uh, so the it's uh, we are trying to synchronize the um, fulfillment in every part of the world. So it will start, um, you know, uh, next week in Asia and. Uh, in next or the one or two weeks uh, in Europe. Unfortunately, we have very big difficulties to have the, the game uh, in the US. So we'll uh, make an announcement uh, regarding the fulfillment in the US uh, pretty soon. Uh, so this is the, uh, the next thing. We also have an expansion for uh, uh, Cer uh, Cerberus, 
uh, a game that's a big hit in France, and um, so we have an expansion uh, for it uh, for uh, Christmas. And we're currently on working on, on uh, other projects like uh, Daimyo, Rebirth of the Empire, our last uh, Kickstarter, and uh, it's currently in, in uh, production. So we're on schedule to, uh, for the fulfillment. And we are also working on a top secret project uh, <laughs> in the continuity of It's a Wonderful World, but a little bit different. It won't uh, take place uh, in the usual, uh, you know, spot with this uh, city. So we'll tell more in due time. Okay. All right. Well, Benjamin, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, this is a fascinating thank demo. You. It works really well, I think, just watching as well, because you still get that experience of trying to guess. So. Yeah, thank you. And again, uh, both playing is one thing, and we are we were very moved to have uh, lots of feedback uh, telling us from players and retailers and uh, people uh, working in game how uh, you know how they were touched by the by the game and the story, and they really picture uh, playing it uh, with their families. And I think the. We are very proud that the original idea and intention of the game designer uh, went through and had, has been understood by uh, all the audience. Yeah, well, super. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, enjoy your thanks day. again for having uh, me. And yes, someone mentioned time. you have the perfect, perfect board gaming environment there. <laughs> someone <laughs> yes. pointed that out. So yeah, super. <laughs> Hope you have a great Cheers. evening. Thank you.